Joy, 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 99.7 FM. Geek Squad. Hello and good evening. My name is Kobi Spiky and Chroma, and you're listening to Geek Squad on Joy FM. And today we're going to have a one on one conversation. Before I introduce my guest, I would just like to tell you something, you know, just a brief history about this guest, my, my guest. And, you know, Geek Squad is all about technology and We've been playing with technology all our lives. I personally have been a fan of technology since I, I, I probably say well, since I was born. <laughs> and one of these fascinating technologies that baffled my mind was fiber optic technology. I mean, how light is used to transmit data. And knowing that, I mean, anyone who knows me knows I'm an audiophile and I love music. And I used to prefer fiber optic cable, those who know the Toslink or the SPDIF connectors know that this is much better than the typical RCA coaxial cables that we have, the copper clad wires. They don't suffer from, you know, interference and all that. This is just pure light covering, you know, ca carrying your, your sound. And the quality is also way better than the copper wires. I used to, you know, marvel about this technology and then I found out that one of the pioneers behind this technology was actually Ghanaian. You know that kind of sense of pride when you find out that, you know, your, your hero is actually closer to you than you expected. And today I'm sitting face to face with this man, Dr. Thomas Mensa. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Spikey. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well. So it's, it's, um, it's amazing. And I mean, I can't hide my excitement, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, uh, I'll just ask you first of all, how, how is it possible 
that someone just wakes up one morning and says, I can fix this problem that these people are having. I mean, I read about the whole thing. Koenig had this technology, you're sitting in their lab somewhere, and you and a bunch of your, you, you know, you guys just went there and it just says, hey, we can fix it. We can make it commercial. How? How was this possible? Well, when you come from my background hmm. and you have been competitive all your life, you know, no matter where I am, I know that I'm in competition mm -hmm. and I want to be on the, on the top of that. Right. See, you know that I went to a disco. There's this uh, model we had, either the first or with the first. <laughs> so any challenge I'm thrown at, I know I can do it. When I was doing the fiber optics, I was competing with Japan. Wow. Yeah, Japan had the best technology and they were driving, and, but the problem I had to solve in Japan couldn't solve. Mm -hmm. You know, I was asked, you know, to move this fiber optics technology to, from the lab to industry, commercialize mm -hmm. it. That's a big problem. That's a tough problem. But yeah. I didn't see that's tough, mm -hmm. you know. It was a challenge. Yes. And you could win it. Yes. And I had to come up with some innovative ideas about, about how to do it. Mm -hmm. We had done all the mathematics, all the engineering uh, for predicting right. the behavior around this uh, application of the fiber optic coding. Mm -hmm. When you are making it, when you want to push it. And the problem was they, used to, they were tired of putting millions into this work. And every time they get to the drawing and coding stuff uh, is breaking. Wow. And so somebody had to stop it. And so what I did is make the applicator out of uh, transparent plexiglass so I could actually see it. Nobody mm -hmm. had thought about that. Mm -hmm. They were just doing the black box thing. You yeah. don't know what's happening. So when I did that, I said, oh, wow, maybe I can use a video to video it and put it on TV screen so I can study that at home. So by watching that, that's how I found out, wow, this is why you have skips in the coding. Mm -hmm. This is why the glass is breaking. This is why nobody understood. And that conforms to our mathematical models. Mm. And so I redesigned the entire applicator. And for the first time I did it, they could produce it at more than two meters a second. Actually, it was 10 times that speed. Wow. 20 meters a second. And, and uh, they used to call them Menza system. Mm -hmm. Just to show it when you do something incredible. So at that age of 35, they had a Menza system that had moved fiber optics from the laboratory curiosity or the commercial floor and industry. So you can make enough to replace all the copper wires in America. That was a big breakthrough, America yeah. and the world. Because, you know, in fiber optics, you have lasers that's mm -hmm. transmitting data, as Spike, you just said, yeah. transmitting your photos, your, your pictures, your Instagram pictures. Mm -hmm on the internet platform. So everybody wanted this thing. Yeah. And so as soon as I did it, that was that was the big breakthrough. And mm. this technology had made United States of America one of the leaders in this whole internet platform. Yeah. And created more 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 companies. Google couldn't be Google without this technology. Exactly. Facebook wouldn't because you take a picture, it stays in your phone. Yeah. To send that picture for somebody to befriend you, you got to use my technology. Mm -hmm. You know. So when I did that, and then they said, "Well, I want to put this underwater now. We got to have a stronger fiber optics." Mm. And my second invention did that. It makes it so strong, so that you can put it underwater. So all mm. the submarine cables yeah. around the world is based on that invention. Wow. Yeah. It's, just, it's amazing, like how easily you know you just thought about this take the change the coating change the plexi coating so i'm thinking what occurred to you that these japanese hadn't thought of you just like i would i would, I would say okay you had studied you know the the coating materials and then thought that this could work better yeah we've done all the uh, mathematical analysis so. okay so we can predict mathematically what is called vortices around the, we can see, mm -hmm. you know, but redesigning the whole thing is is another is is an, uh, is another step, and so 
We had to do that. So you have uniform distribution around this glass. It wasn't breaking. It went to 20 meters. And my second invention took it 50 meters a second. Now, the Japanese, one thing about me, when I'm in competition, I don't care whether you are white <laughs> or you are from Japan or you are from somewhere. All I care is I can do it. You know, so the four of us are three whites and myself. I did the commercialization part. You know, we look at problems they had to be solved. This, in 1972, somebody said, hey, we can probably transmit mm -hmm. pictures yeah. using lasers. But the actual production of fiber optics and demonstration at 2 dB per kilometer, I don't want to get into technical mm -hmm. details. Well, it was done at Corning where I was. All right. And so when I, when I did this, you know, when I did a submarine cable, that's very, very critical. A lot of people think that when you are sending, uh, when, you know, where you're, you're using satellite. Mm -hmm. No. Satellite is only just a, one little equation we have up there. Satellite is not. You see, when you're watching CNN, yeah. there's a delay of 30 seconds. Yeah. This time, there's no 30 seconds delay. It's like the speed of light. It's you press send, and, and it's in China. It. You press send, and it's in Brazil. You press send, and then it's in Kumasi. You press send, it's in Tambali. You press send, it's in UK. So just by pressing send, the speed of light, it, it gets there. Yeah. If somebody sees your picture, oh, hey, <laughs> I love that picture. Or Instagram. You know, people are making comments on Instagram. That is what is happening. And fiber optics, what we call bandwidth, is, is really enormous. Yeah. You can transmit pictures, videos, YouTube videos that people are going to watch on your show on your streaming is transmitted by, by this technology. Yeah. I mean it's it's we've we've seen a lot of digging going around in Ghana when they said we were moving from the normal transmission to fiber. So a lot of people knew that they've heard the word fiber but they didn't know where it's coming from. So I'm in the studio with the man behind the reason why MTN has 4G, Vodafone has fiber and uh, and they're bringing it to your homes, you're getting fast internet speeds. And that's what you're talking about when you talk about bandwidth. Without this fiber, we couldn't have, you know, explored this large bandwidth of internet speeds. And we're really um, grateful for that. Another thing, too, is that you mentioned Koenig. Yes. I knew Koenig from the makers of Gorilla Glass technology on yes, our smartphone. Yes, yes. So this company that you work for is responsible for all these things. Yeah, because Koenig, just like I worked in two of the top laboratories in the world. Mm. Okay, Koenig is one of them, Sullivan Park. Right. And the other, the other of course, is IBM. You know, and actually the third one is Bell Labs. Yeah. I'm the only black person that has worked for both research labs. Wow, these amazing. These top research labs. And Corning, fiber optics made Corning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and what is it that Corning always had, uh, has the ability to step a little bit ahead by, by, by hiring smart brains like me. Mm. You know, when you are there, they don't look at you as a... African or Boy, black yeah. person, they look at you. This is the guy that made fiber optics work for a billion people in the world. And they push you on and urge you on. You know, when I did solve the first problem, the president walks in my office, this is $10,000 for you, Doc. Wow. Yes. You know, 35 years old sitting in my office. And that was a big breakthrough. The impact, of course, is yeah. worldwide. Oh, it's worldwide. So when, when, when we did that, People at Bell Labs were so fascinated. Mm -hmm. They said, what's going on? Why is Connie take off like a, like a missile? They said, Dr. Mensah is there. So I'm at a conference. The Bell Labs uh, guys approached me. I saw people pointing at me. They said, oh, uh, would you, uh, have you, you like to of, come work well, with us? Have you thought of Bell Labs? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bell Labs is, is you walk on water to mm. get into Bell Labs. I said, well, if you can double my salary, I think I will think about it. Impressive, and impressive. If I can go to a place that's warm, I'm from Ghana. So, <laughs> you know, Corning, all oh, is very cold. Yeah, it's New cold. Jersey is cold. That's all right. We take you to New Jersey and then you go to Atlanta. It's hot. It's yeah, nice the warm. south. So that's what happened. Now, I mean, I mean, Bell Labs and then the president of Corning called uh, AT&T and said, hey, you stole one of our, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, great minds. supernatural guys here, man. <laughs> You know, we cannot uh, have him work on the same thing he did in Corning for at least for a year. Give us mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. So they, they came to me. I said, we know you are hot. You're one of the most uh, intelligent guys, innovative guys. Uh, but this is what Corning is saying. But I think we have, can put you on missiles. Mm. Okay. 
And so the government, U.S. has come to us and said we should command missiles for fire optics. So that's where we're going to put you. In three years, I had patents on that too. I was just about to ask you, yeah. laser-guided missile yes. systems. Yes, yes. I see that those things only in video games. And you are yes. the brain behind yes. that. You have three patents in yes. that. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes, because basically, in fact, all advanced missiles now, mm -hmm. the targeting of missiles we call the intelligent, intelligent weapons. Yeah. All these missiles, you see them, you see the crosshair. That's yeah, the crosshairs. You, with a crosshair, that means it's going to hit. <laughs> we started that with this uh, fiber optic guided mm -hmm. missile. We were the first to do that. So it's not only by sitting somewhere and, and, then, and then guiding the missile to hit a tank. You know, you can actually put it through a window. Mm -hmm. without, without, laser guided. But exactly, yeah. because laser is guiding these, these systems. And it's so very accurate. Very, very accurate. And, and we did that. I was, I was happy to do that. Because in war, they were dropping these bombs and it's going and killing a lot of people in their yeah. villages for nothing. Civilians and yeah. innocent people. So if you can put it in one spot, you know, put it through a window, then the, the structures outside, you can leave them, leave them, you know, leave them. Yeah. With the, so, so the intelligent targeting, which is used now uh, everywhere from airplanes, mm -hmm. you know, the pilot doesn't have to study mathematics. Doesn't have to be the engineer. All he has to study video games. <laughs> all right. Very true. And as soon as he see the target, he locks on it. And it goes straight to it. It goes straight to it. Even yeah. if the tank moves, because you are bringing pictures directly to the, the screen, to his screen, continuously, it moves. It just, you know, go along. And by the time you hit a tank, it's hit. Wow. It's used on ships. It's used on, 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 in the war. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Everywhere. And one amazing thing is that for these missiles to be that accurate, because they're moving at like yeah, very Mach fast. 1, the yeah, speed of yeah, sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they actually need something that's as accurate as laser guiding system. Yes, yes. So what does it mean to have patents? Well, if you're an inventor, your name should be it. Yeah. I remember going to Jubilee House and giving the, a plaque with a series of patents to Nana, uh, His Excellency. There. Mm. Your name in case my Thomas O. Mensa, Thomas Uusu Mensa, mm -hmm. should be on the patent. Right. If, if you, if, number one, if they apply for it and the inventor's name is not on it, let's say you put some other white guy's name. Yeah. Instead of, they won't grant it. Mm. The inventor got to be on it, you know. And I have seven in six years. Yeah. You know, sometimes it takes people 10 years to get one. You know, so, so this is where we are. So somebody like that, you can do wonders. Yeah. You know, I'm now on two boats in Dubai. I just came back from Dubai after 10 days there. I'm on a board called Li-Fi. Yeah. Technology Development. Li-Fi. Li-Fi will replace Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. I'm on the board. The only black on that board. Wow. And we did a demonstration where we just took the Wi-Fi out of our computers and mm -hmm. laptops. And the lights that shining on your screens is the one that's connecting you to the internet. Amazing. Now the beauty of this is that number one, you cannot tap into it. You know how in the airport somebody yeah. sitting there with a the Wi-Fi stealing your credit card exactly. numbers. No, 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 no. With light, you can't do this. And Any so the, reason why? Well, because even fiber optics is by light, right? So yes, technically, it is. you you have to go and cut the fiber. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And once Before, you cut it, you damage it. You damage it. You know, so light is the, the means of transmission. Now, Apple and all the other companies are eyeing this technology. Mm. You know, and I think our group uh, Zero One is a leader in it and is going to compete with Apple, with everybody that's into Li Fi. Wow. You know, so now if you can think that ahead and do wonderful things, that means today's technology is easy for you. Obviously. That's why I can come to Ghana and say, hey, we're going to do this. I told Nanado, he was in my office. I showed him something. He said, oh, Doc, can I have this? I said, I'll develop something better for you. <laughs> so when he won, the day after, I developed a 100-day agenda for Ghana. I called Mark Manu, NPP chairman, now of the ports. He said, oh, I'm meeting Nanado. Okofolia, send it. I send it. It's now being used to guide Ghana wow. in industrialization. In every sector, every area of industrialization is coming out of that list. Mm. 
I have that list right with me. We'll get straight to it. First, I have to acknowledge my sponsors. Geek Squad is brought to you by Down Safe Doctor. Safe Doctor, Doctor with a K. It's an app. You can find it in the Play Store. Safe Doctor is the future for better medical care. If you're listening to us, I'm in the studio with Dr. Thomas Mensa, and you've, you, you probably heard him. This, I mean, he's a genius. That's just an understatement. I wish it was a word bigger than genius to use to describe you right now. But well, you're a re- revolutionary. Well, I, I, uh, you, you heard of uh, uh, W.B. Du Bois, right? Yes. Okay, his book, mm-hmm. Africa is the Light of the World. The second, the new edition, I am looking through the first pages and I see my name. Really? Yeah, I said my name in, in the, in the boys' book, Africa, the Light of the World. What are they talking? They say, oh, Dr. Thomas Mensah is the Inhope Tep of our time. And I said, well, who is Inhope <laughs> So I Googled the guy. Inhope designed the pyramids yeah. 3,000 years ago. So to be compared to Inhotep, that designed one of the seven wonders of, of the, the world. world. That's Design and build the pyramids. Except that now you are doing it in new areas of nanotechnology, of Li-Fi, of fiber optics, of all the infrastructure development. That's what you are doing now. So to be compared to that, the Inhotep, That's I, think, I think it is. Yeah, it is. You know, it is, you know, and, and everywhere I've been recognized. You know, I came here, they call Kwame Nkrumah. African Genius Award, all over the places. You know, they give you awards everywhere. Hmm. That's okay, you know. But my goal now is to move Ghana to a place where it will be the envy of Africa. I have the premier of, 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 of Johannesburg saw me in New York. I said, Doc, I went to Japan. I went to Silicon Valley. I want you in South Africa. This conference, I want you to be one of the uh, headliners of this conference on tech. Mm. You know, the so-called, you know, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Invited me there. I spoke two days. They said, can you stay uh, five more days? You want you in South Africa for one week? <laughs> and here, they, anywhere I'm going, they have these sirens and this yeah. uh, motor, motor, motorcade. Yeah. So that I can get through traffic yeah. quick and be where I should be. I've said all your seven innovation centers. I'm going to do something for them already. Mm. I advise all the seven innovation centers in South Africa, the universities everywhere. But I'm going to do something special, just like what I've done for Ghana. You know, uh, I had built what is called the Silicon Valley of Ghana. Mm. This is probably was is one of the most important things that has ever happened in Ghana. It is. I mean, it is. That's we Silicon. know Silicon Valley is the brain behind. I mean, it's the it's where Facebook was born. It's exactly. where Google is. It's where all these big big companies, tech companies, are. Yes, and so, we've to, been looking for something like that yes. in Ghana. So I've I've launched one in Kofi Annan Center hmm. for Ghana. I could have finished the one in South Africa or even Africa because I own the domain name Silicon Valley. Uh, de la Côte d'Ivoire, mm. you know, and then the one in South Africa, Silicon Valley of South Africa. But when I launched Ghana, home is home. Yeah. When I launched the one at Kofi Annan Center, mm-hmm. and people can go there, SiliconValleyGH.com, they could see all the developments there. It has attracted international attention, Spike. Yeah. The whole world. You know, Google Artificial Intelligence Lab saw this and said, wait a minute, this is in Ghana? That's where we got to be. And so they have announced on CNBC in America that Google Artificial Intelligence Research is coming to Ghana. That's a big win for Ghana. It was. When we heard about this, we were very impressed. I mean, I was even asking questions, why Ghana? Yes. Because they've done a lot of things in Nigeria. Yes. Facebook has got got a headquarters in Nigeria, but... Google says we want to set up an AI lab, and then they decided we're going to do it in Ghana. In Ghana, yeah, because they see that what I put together on the Silicon Valley of Ghana, they say, whoa, wow, this guy, this is better than Nigeria, mm. this is better than Kenya, this is better than South Africa. I mean, on the Silicon Valley of Ghana, I have telemedicine. Nobody has ever thought about it. Telemedicine, where doctors in Kolebu will link with doctors in Mayo Clinic in the United States, the best the best hospital in the world. Mm. They can link up with the, the with, with, with hospitals in UK, 
in Germany and in South Africa. When I went, I saw where I can put the node in South Africa, the IBM lab. Hmm. So the doctors would look on the screen and see, let's say you take an NMR image. Yeah. So they can see the brain of the child. They can see whatever it is. And you got four doctors all comparing those. Say, so we've seen this case here before. This is what you do. This is what real time online through fiber optics and, 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 and the internet platform. So it is very, very superior that we are bringing to Ghana. So mm. they see this. They see all the other stuff we have in Silicon Valley artificial intelligence. Speaking of that. Yes. What do you think artificial intelligence being set up in Ghana, how do you think it's going to help Ghana? Well, artificial intelligence is already helping Ghana. Hmm. Okay. But Google's setting it up here. It, ta it takes us further. Right. First of all, before they even decided, I was already developing this AI, making sure the AI labs is in the four universities here. Mm -hmm. Kwame Nkrumah University, Legon, Cape Coast, Tambale. So that their, their computer labs and their AI labs will be developed and then work with the, the Google AI lab. Right. All right. Number one, to show how important this is, the AI lab is the first in Africa yeah. for Google. Mm -hmm. There's one in Tel Aviv. There's one in Zurich, Switzerland. Mm. There's one even in Paris. There's one... In Silicon Valley, USA, we will be the fifth. So, which means once you have this, this AI will be in everything. I'll give you a simple example. Mm. You saw the Galamsey, where yeah. you see the drones. Artificial intelligence is in the drone. Mm. So, the Galamsey guy say, hey, let me run and hide in this forest. <laughs> the drone is, is, is detecting him. You know, I'm bringing live pictures of him, which, you know, Jenny Akokwam. <laughs> we see him, we pick him up and bring him straight up. We see him on the screen. Mm. You know, so when we finish, we want to actually put a, a, a live video, if you will, so that you can watch them 24 7. Right. But if it's helping Galamsi like this, for us to fight Galamsi, you know, that's serious because these guys are polluting all our waters, yeah. polluting the whole area. So that's the tool we are using. That's one. Another application is precision agriculture. Hmm. You know, the AI is driving these drones, and that small drone is looking at the entire farm. We are planting uh, what cocoa yam. Yeah. We are planting plantain. It's looking at the whole field from above, and say, "Oh, you know that corner over there? We need some fertilizer." Right. It's telling you the farm. Exactly. Go and put fertilizer there. Oh, they, 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 this side need irrigation. Mm -hmm. It can even activate the sprinklers. Yeah. This side, guess what? It needs, besides irrigation, in pesticides. You don't want you don't want these worms to eat. Mm -hmm. So that 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 AI is already playing a role in precision agriculture. Right. We use AI in the United States beyond precision and all that stuff. We use it even to fight war. Yeah. Oh. Predictive. Yeah, predictive. You know, all these smart weapons. AI is everywhere. Helicopters will drive by themselves, mm. you know, with this technology. Even ships te will drive by, the, no, no, no pilot in the ship. And so this technology, Ghana has to be somewhere in there. Yeah. You don't want Ghana to be way behind, as we are in many areas. So we've got to be in there. And therefore, you're going to have children. You know, when I spoke at Adisada College, I'll put a virtual reality lab there, you know, multimedia lab mm -hmm. with virtual. So a little coming up i didn't have all this when i was coming up a little come oh yeah it is virtual reality they, you see the goggles that yeah. people so the kids will be playing with this they become part of AI. so by the time they are seven eight nine ten eleven they are into that tech that's what's happening in the u.s yeah even people who are not even educated they can get to it so this is going to be very important it can create more industries for mm -hmm. us people think oh it's going to take my job no way this create going to create more. That, that has been a lot of fear for a lot of people. People are thinking artificial intelligence is going to take their jobs. No, but exactly, but it's not going to take. Hmm. It's going to take any. It's not going to take anybody's jobs at all. And so now I'm very pleased that Nana, you know, His Excellency already said free SHS for hmm. everybody, so that every kid will have a chance. Yeah. No matter from where you are, you know. And I say even if you do it, uh, do a track and some go in. The others who are at home, they can use. If everything works, they can yeah. use distance learning. 
Exactly. You know, communicate with your teachers, get the exams, and all that. They can do that online. You know, but everything uh, put on that hundred a day agenda is very important. It got to be done. I was actually going to mention that, you know, talking about the advanced broadband 4G, the fiber optic cable to link major cities, including schools, to the villages. That's actually something that would help. Good. But then again, you'd ask the question, what is hampering us as a country when it comes to this technology? Because this would really help if villages, as you put here in your plan, they would have in the post office high-speed internet that can connect them to the cities. So let's say a child in the village could exchange notes with a child in the city. There you go. But then again, we have all these great ideas, but... Yeah, but you got to have the implemented the execution. Mm, exactly. You know, That's what I'm gotta, talking about. The execution. It has the to be done. you got to have the execution. You know, all the, the Google has laid what they call Google Fiber. Google which Fiber, is, which exactly. Is you're using Corning Fiber. Mm. You're using my invention. <laughs> so you're using your invention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, I really want to know this before you continue. Did you get money anytime someone uses Google, your fiber technology? Well, a little bit, but it's not, no, it's not as much as, you know, uh, you would want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how much that's, that's like ringtone, you know. Yeah. But, you know, we get... But then, because of who you are yeah. and what you do, you have... Many people trying to help fund what you do. Yeah, right. You know, people are looking at, they say, well, if we have money put on this guy, put in whatever he's doing in Ghana, we're going to make sure that that's where the money is directed. So that's where it's, that's going to, what's going to help us implement exactly. all these ideas that you Execu have. Execution. And that's very, very important. you got to execute. you got to lay the fiber. You know, I was saying, hey, the two billion that was recently approved. You know, mm -hmm. you got to build infrastructure, connect yeah, the definitely. schools. Definitely, it's very connect important. The yeah, connect the schools. Let the schools be number one. Mm. You know, the school over there in some uh, the choir or some place should be at the same level. Yeah, I want a girl two years old here take the to, take the, the the laptop, and then be steady two years. Be studying, be studying on the tablet, just mm. like they do in the U.S. You don't want a girl. Two years sitting in some under some tree somewhere, haven't heard of even a laptop. And we see that, we see that all the time. There was this new story where a teacher literally had to draw yes. Microsoft Word yes. on a board yes. for students to get experience. Yes. We've had teachers teaching computer without computers. Yes. Yes. And so you know, there's that passion that people really want to learn technology, but it's not available. It's not readily available for them. Especially those in the remote areas. It's going to change. As a matter of fact, one of the board members at mm. Silicon Valley of Ghana, he is the one that gave the lab to that rural area school that a guy was drawing computers on. Oh, great. So we are seeing results already. You know, beyond this uh, Google coming here, we are seeing the result. All we got to do is execute everything on that agenda. Everything. Great. Not just one little thing here. And it shouldn't be business uh, as usual. Exactly. Yeah. And, and in my... I remember in my uh, one of my uh, yeah. you know, one one of my uh, interviews, I just said, "Look, one of the important things His Excellency Nanado has done is top doom so. Mm. People just forget easily. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't here, but I don't know. You can have light go off in one hour, two hours, or a whole day. No, you stop all industries. Exactly, and considering that. Fiber optics actually works with lights. <laughs> You're turning yeah, off yeah, the yeah, power. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, somebody in Nigeria mm. at the airport, he saw people being checked in with a flashlight. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's doomso for you. No more doomso. So I uh, called Danado for stopping doomso. It mm. got to be stopped. And as we bring in more energy, more, more power, mm. whether it's solar or whether it's wind or whatever it is, we want to make sure that we don't sell that surplus power. Hmm. We got to keep it. We got to keep it and use it for industrialization. And here's you, someone who's also developed a system creating solid-state rechargeable batteries. Yeah, and that's very, very important. One yeah. of the things I'm doing at the moment is, uh, you know, nanotechnology is the best technology for that. I've written a book on that. Yeah, I saw that. We are looking at, uh, with the Norwegians, hmm. we are building a solar farm in Volta. Yeah, I've heard yeah, about that. Yeah, all my industries are going to help. Everything that I'm following, I'm pushing, is going to be help the entire Ghana. See, Volta region, they will have a solar farm. All right. 
get the electricity, connect all the schools over there. Norwegians are uh, pledging 200 million for that pro wow. project, 100 megawatt. You know. And so we got to have this. Um, we are also doing what is called the MRO, Aircraft Maintenance. We call it a, a organization, mm. MRO, you know, called Maintenance Facility. We are putting one in Kumasi. They will create 400,000 jobs. You know, what is it about? All the aircraft in West Africa will fly to come to Ghana. this MRO. Yeah. They come in, the engineers and the aircraft technicians check and inspect the entire airplane. Oh, this instrument, we got to replace it on the avionics for the mm. pilot. We got to replace this hydraulic system. We got to replace, they replace everything that's needed replacement after the inspection, and then the plane can t take off from here right. and go to Burkina, go to Lomi, go to everywhere in the entire West Africa. We want that to be here. It's on the 100-day agenda. Yeah, see. You know, we have it there. We have the money. Utum Fua sent in. He has given 23,000 acres in Ankasi for that. You know, with the new aviation minister that's hmm. coming in, Ada, we're going to work with him, immediately start redesigning, and making sure we're surveying that land and move that project forward. Great. If you're listening to us and you want to join in the conversation, you can send a WhatsApp to 0244 340 0244 340 I'll read them on air. With me in the studio is Dr. Thomas Mensa. Oh, is it? I'm, I'm trying to find a word. I'm still looking for a word. I want to find something greater than genius because this man is just brilliant. You know, seven patents. Six years. In six years. Wow. So, doctor, most of our problems in Ghana can be solved with science and technology. Yes. But you end up finding that we're still solving them unscientifically. Like, for instance, I've noticed one thing that really bothers me is traffic. I read somewhere that every human being, you know, spends about six months of their lives sitting in traffic. Yes. And we could just have a simple system that just determines that traffic from here is thick. So let me ease traffic on here. But it's not even done. You know, and these are basic problems that could be fixed and they're not fixed. So I'm wondering, how do we then tackle the larger technological problems if we can't even fix something as basic as traffic? Well, the traffic is still... The challenge is still part of the equation. Mm. You know, everything we are doing in Ghana is going to ease traffic. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Nigeria's just built uh, a subway. Right. You know. Yes. And the president was sitting in the subway. It went viral. Everybody, oh, Nigeria, in Abuja, you know, a little subway. Mm. And so we are, we, are, we are looking at all these things that will uh, reduce congestion in Accra by creating infrastructure that will let people get to places quicker, and all that. And we want to make sure that we, what we build even a subway, mm -hmm. like Nigerians have built, is taking people to the right places. Right. You know, we take him to, straight to the airport quickly. You know, you don't have to, you know, lose two hours in traffic before you can get into yeah. the airport. You know, we are trying to improve our airports. I've mentioned that that of Kumasi. Mm. You know, you, you can, we want to make sure that the, the next roads, highways we are building, See, they now went to Kumasi and said, hey, we got to redo the roads here. Yeah. So there could be dual carriage roads all over the place. You know, we need these things. Yeah. If you have dual carriage in Kumasi, in those areas, you won't have traffic. Mm. Here, too. You know, we have subways here, and that means that we use traffic. Besides yeah. subways, uh, we're going to do things that's going to make, you see, Theresa May, mm. British Prime Minister, is in South Africa. Right. Theresa May. She's giving five billion to South Africa. Can you believe that? So Ghana is sitting at the place of opportunity right now. All the developed countries in the West and East are coming here. Yeah. Why would they want to come here? You know, because they know Africa really is the place now. You know, everybody has a cell phone in, in the United States, everybody mm -hmm. has a cell phone everywhere. Here, the, the market is still here. They yeah. are all going to come here. All we have to do is be, be very smart about it when they get here. Have the right people at the table asking the right questions. Exactly. Because the, the past 50 years, past 50 years, we've been working with all these folks and we haven't developed. 
at all. So when they show up all of a sudden, and luckily, Ghana has options. Mm. See, before they show up from England or from America, that's what we got. Take it all mm -hmm. in. Yeah. They give us any terms. They won't even do it. In the consultant, they've taken our money in Ghana, millions, and Ghana is still where it is. They won't even do it. But guess what? Now we have China. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, you come here, uh, China is also at the table too. Mm -hmm. You know, and they have the technology too. China is the second economic power in the world. Yeah. So they are here. So it's not like the old days. Well, we so didn't when have a, choice. a guy UK come in, you know, say anything and we take it, and then we are still where we are. <laughs> you know, in many places, since I left, a lot of things haven't changed. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've been here, they've signed contracts. What happened? <laughs> you know. I think, I guess we could blame it on us too. Oh, yeah. We are, we are the table. We are the <laughs> ones. <laughs> so if you're listening to us, this show is brought to you by Safe Doctor. The Safe Doctor app is a telemedicine app that allows you to consult with a doctor of your choice anytime, anywhere, and any place you're using your smartphone. Safe Doctor brings together doctors, hospitals, pharmacies, laboratories, and other healthcare service providers all on your phone. You can have real-time video consultation with a qualified doctor and receive lab requests and prescriptions to partner labs and pharmacies. This provides convenience, savings in time, and cost and makes you the center of care. The Safe Doctor app also gives you access to a well-researched library of current medical issues. It offers tips on first aid and access to our medical chat room. Your medical records are also available on your phone in the event of an emergency. Reach Safe Doctor on 302 909-746 or 055-832-4704 or visit softedgelimited.com. The Facebook handle is safedoctorgh, doctor with a K, so S-A-F-E-D-O-K-T-O-R-G-H on Facebook for more details. Download the Soft Safe Doctor app now from the Google Play Store and take control of your health. Safe Doctor the future of better medical care. So I'm going to be reading some WhatsApp messages. The first one says, I am very excited about today's show. We're excited about today's show too, trust me. I'm a proud, I'm proud to be a Santa Clausian, Dr. Mensa. We are proud of you. Santa Clausians are proud of you. Thank Adisco you. people are yeah, claiming their own. And can you please bring him back next week? Wow, Dr. Thomas just opened my eyes to a lot of things. Dr. Thomas, people want you back here next week. I'm blown away. I'm blown away. Best show currently on air. Big ups, Geek, Geek Squad from Albert. Big ups to you too, Albert. And is Dr. Thomas Mensa Santa Clausian? Is he on Twitter? Yes, he's a Santa Clausian. Dr. Thomas, are you on Twitter? Of course you'd be on Twitter. The man invented a thing that carries Twitter. <laughs> Super genius is understatement. Kudos, Dr. Santa Clausians forever from SKAO. At, at Dr. Thomas Mensa, that's the Twitter At handle. Dr. Thomas Mensa, that's his Twitter handle. Kobe, please ask him, does he believe in God? He talks more about himself in a kind of boastful way. He gave him all that wisdom. Let me answer anyway. that. Let me sure, answer sure. that. You should get my book, The Right Stuff Comes in Black. Mm -hmm. I have a chapter that talks about Dr. Thomas Mensa's faith in God. Right. I believe in God, but I believe in God to do things for Ghana. Mm. You know, to make Ghana move forward. The things that I'm talking about, because when, when, when the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself, everything I talk about is about this. Mm. What is transportation infrastructure? What is putting all these cold stores <laughs> in the villages so we can all have food? Everything I talk about is love your neighbor as yourself. And let me tell you one thing. The things that I do, God gives me the wisdom to do this. Mm. Okay. And that, that's what that person should take off from here. Yeah. Some people are saying, oh, why does uh, Nana want to build a cathedral, national cathedral? Mm. Say so he's a Christian. He can build it. David built the temple for the Israelites. So if Nana want to build it, the national cathedral so everybody can worship, kudos. I'm more in fear. So I believe in God. By the way, more than most people. Mm. So that answers your question. He believes in God more than most people. And he believes in loving your neighbor as yourself. Amazing exclamation mark. Dr. Nyan Safo Thomas Mensa. I'm inspired to be the best. We're inspired too. 
And please uh, include your name so we can know where the message is coming from. Good evening. I'd like to know from Dr. Mensa how far was his initial bullet train idea for Ghana? Also, how committed is the government to it? Well, you should talk mostly to the railway ministry. <laughs> Today, I want to just focus on technology. Right. So, hello, good evening to you and Dr. Thomas Mensa. My prayer is our leaders and the system help him to promote this good idea. My name is Abusa Jackson Jilanyo and Dansman Last Stop. Thank you, Jackson, for your message. Good evening, Spikey. I've learned a lot about this great man back in 2008. Very funny, there's no reference about him in our academic curriculum. Please let the doctor know that all his dreams will vanish into thin air the day another political party comes into power. Yeah, Ghana and politics. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited that Dr. Mensah is a Santa Claus. Santa Clausians, really? How <laughs> Kwabucho friends should take note? I'm looking at a Kwabucho guy right now. That's just on a lighter note. Doc, God bless you. Hi, good evening. I'm Faith Abna Boni inside University of Education, Winneba Campus. I'm listening to you live and I'm loving your show. In fact, you do all. Keep it up. By the way, your guest is such an amazing person and also inspiring. Want to know more about him. He's on Facebook. He's on Twitter. He's on the internet. So, good evening, Geek Squad. I'm so fascinated by the discussion going on by our own... Ghana is really proud of you. I'm appealing to Doc. If he can make some of his speeches that he delivered in other countries available to our second cycle schools and universities to be shown to inspire future leaders. Emmanuel Henry from La Paz. Emmanuel, I agree with you. Please, I'd like to know from Dr. Mensa when he got Google to come to Ghana because as far as I know, it's always been Google's plan to build the center in Ghana. Caesar from Sandema. What does he say? He says he'd like to know when you got Google to come to Ghana because as far as he knows... It's always been Google's plan to build a center in Ghana. No, it was a competition. You know, it's either there's an office here, but having an office doesn't mean you have the artificial intelligence center here. Center here. That was a competition between four countries. And they decided finally to do it here because I launched the, the Silicon Valley of Ghana. Dr. Thomas Mensa, brilliant. But please tell him that I didn't solve Doom, so it was solved by Mahama. <laughs> 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 Okay, now we, we will be going into politics if we try that. And we need a whole segment just to listen to Dr. Thomas Mensah. He's got to come back next week, please. Hmm. <laughs> we'll think about it. Doctor is great, but he should leave politics out. Doctor said he should leave politics out. He's shaking his head. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm, not, I'm not political. Mm. You know. Dr. Thomas, I'm really proud of you. God bless you. How can I get in touch with you? That's Gideon from Odomasi Krobo. And, wow, this is the first time that we've had so many messages on WhatsApp. I've got another message. Frank, um, Anane, goosebumps all over me knowing that Dr. is a Ghanaian. Keep pushing, Dr. Ghana will get there. How will he blend technology with science, engineering, and mathematics, and with scholarship package, Mensa Kweku Kuje? Well, let me, let me, let me. Uh, sure. Uh, basically, uh, tomorrow, I am, w we are meeting the science prize winners, mm. Ghana science prize winners, uh, because uh, SNET want to give them a prize, you know, 10,000 10, cities. And then Silicon Valley, in addition to the Kofi Kofi Annan, we're going to give those winners scholarship a package for them to learn coding and software mm. at the at the center free. Right, great. That's that's great news. Good evening to you all. I'm Joshua Opoku Ajima, president of IoT Network Hub. Please, I want you to ask Doc what he thinks of the future of Internet of Things and what it holds for Africa, and what are some of his projects on IoT, Internet of Things. Well, Internet of Things is, is, is a very important technology. Yeah. You know, and I have, I have a company that actually uh, is using Internet of Things for, for the home, equipment mm. for the home. It's actually a watch. That's what, what I was called a smart, a smart watch. watch. Mm -hmm. It's actually better than the Google watch. You wave it in front of TV and it changes the channel of the television for you. You raise up your hand, and this light goes brighter. You lower it when you're wearing the watch, and the light dims. Mm. When you're looking, we are, let's say, working out. We want to change the, 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 music. the music. All you do is just do this, Flick change your, the your music, wrist. and then it raises the volume. It goes down. That's one of my IoT I uh, have uh, developed. Uh, yeah, I did it with uh, uh, some Indian 
Indian Indian scientist. Right. Okay. Now this is Silicon Valley. Uh, in the U.S., we are bringing it to this Silicon Valley of Ghana. Mm. But that's one IoT for the home. Now, IoT, once we build all these roads we have nice, all these roads will have sensors. Mm. Sensors in them. They'll tell you, ver like in the, in the U everywhere, oh, watch out, these particular roads are closed. Mm. You know, you see that flashing. Don't take this road, take yeah. that road, you see it, you know. But those sensors are the ones that's, uh, and also it will help with uh, driverless cars too. Mm. You know, where the sensors are used to, you know, yeah, control by them to navigate yeah. through the, the traffic. So this IoT is very, very important. It's coming, and I know we push it in Ghana too. Right. So you mentioning your Internet of Things watch, it brings me to a question someone's asking, which, because it sounds very much like something that Kantanka would develop. Um, please ask Doc if he's contacted. Kantanka to unite for greater inventions in Ghana, Ike in the USA. Yeah, I know I know of Kantanka, mm. but the things we are doing on the larger scale is going to help Kantanka. Right. You know, right now he's building these nice cars, you know, and then once he finishes, uh, I think the price is a little bit higher. Too steep, yeah. Yeah. And so we are scaling things up whereby we can have Kantanka, uh, Kantanka work with some of the institutions mm -hmm. we have so that he can scale and reduce his price. That's right. one thing. Another thing is the fact that, you know, I was happy wh when uh, the president was talking about polytechnics. Mm -hmm. Now, polytechnic education is very important, important for us in Africa. When you go to Dubai, I was in, du I was in Dubai. You get f hundreds, hundreds of skyscrapers. Right. So once you train somebody in polytechnic, they come out, they can do wiring of all these construction projects we have here. You know, mm -hmm. you go in, you got to wire, not just little, little homes, but skyscrapers. Yeah. Installing, installing air conditioning, all these, these, these uh, 54 story that they have. Dubai it actually brings in all these people from outside. So those polytechnics, once they get their certificate and they can use the, the lathe mm -hmm. or the CNC, computer numerically controlled Machines, machines yeah. to machine parts, sophisticated than even the crankshaft, you know, like Kantaka mm -hmm. will use. Once they learn all that, they can do two things. Either work for the big construction companies, set up all their own SMX, their own company. Yeah. And then you call him and he comes in, wire your, wire your home for you. He comes in, fix your television. He comes in, fix. And the, the one thing they could be doing nationally is these coal stores we are planning to put in different villages. You have a certificate. You finish uh, your, 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 your polytechnic. Mm -hmm. You go there and say, hey, I can do all the piping for all the freon and all these systems. You got a job. Yeah. If not, you're working for yourself. And, and then the government. So I like why the government is going to push this. Polytechnic is as good as getting a certificate or a degree from a university. university. Yeah. Well, you see, another thing to you mentioning this, we have people that go to the universities, the polytechnics, and they learn all these things. Unfortunately, they learn the theory of yeah. this, and they don't have the practical experience. So they come out of schools with an engineering degree, but can't even fix their own broken, say what? Um, Th <laughs> well, things are going to change. You know, you know, Silicon Valley, we've already have on the board all the four vice chancellors mm. and I'm visiting I visited some already all the universities you know I visited aviation sciences atomic energy for Ligon yeah. I visited Kwame Nkrumah University the Cape Coast I'll be doing Tamale so the universities we can look at their curriculum and say hey by the way these labs can we have these machines there can we have a CNC machine yeah. there so that the students is cutting complex shapes on a computer controlled numerical machines yeah. you know so they get a hands on so you come in and you're your, your air condition is... It's broken and you can fix You're it. You're an engineer, you can fix exactly. it. Exactly. You know? Uh, so so this is very important. We are pushing for this. We are pushing for all these curriculum mm. changes. I'm part of it. I've seen it. You know, because if you don't see it, if you don't work with your hands, do practical things, then you, you, it's just theory you're going to read. Exactly. You know? So the polytechnics, the universities, the engineering schools, we're going to do that. And everything. It's not only piping alone. Even computer, laptops. You know. Yeah, it's 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 so sad. We've run out of time. I mean, 
my hi, my name is Imano Ajima. Can you please get him to agree to come back next week? Next week, next week, next week. <laughs> the person wants you back here next week. I, I mean, I, this I, well, I travel a lot. Right. I'll be in overseas. Okay. Next week, when I get back, we'll definitely have you back uh, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 been a great conversation with you, Doctor Thomas Mensah. I'm honored to meet you. One of your biggest fans. I've been using your technology and. I'm sure all my listeners are excited to meet you. I mean, I have someone actually standing by the door waiting to meet you. <laughs> and yeah, we will definitely have you on here again. You. It's been a pleasure having you. Sparky, I enjoyed this time. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Um, so the show was brought to you by da Safe Doctor app, which is available in the Play Store. You can download the Safe Doctor app from the Play Store. Safe Doctor, the future for better medical care. Um, I have to acknowledge my producers. Number one, Della Aglanu, the Unlock Geek, Abeku Sankofi, and Dennis, the Fairboy, the engineer who is handling my streaming and social media. Uh, he's an engineer. See that? <laughs> That's good. So, this, my name is Kobe Spikey and Kuma. You can find me at The Real Spikey on all social media handles. Dr. Ash. At Dr. At Thomas, Dr. Thomas Mensa on Twitter, and you can search for him on Facebook, Dr. Thomas Mensa. It's been a pleasure having you here. Spiky, it's a great pleasure. And we definitely want to have you again sure. when you get back. All right. Thank this you. show has been Geek Squad, and you're listening to Joy 99.7. Up next is the news. After that, Overdrive with Sammy Forsen.